Hi all, I'm going to go through two problems today instead of just one because they are both very similar. In particular, I'm going to do both of them using the set data structure which may be new to some of you. But let's start by looking at the problem. As always, you can find the link in the video description. So feel free to pause the video and give them a read or even solve them yourself first. The first one is I've been everywhere and in this problem you are given a list of cities as an input let me just scroll down and show you so from this list you can see that some cities are listed more than once for example saskatoon happens twice on the list uh, toronto is mentioned three times and your task is to figure out how many unique cities are on the list so which in this case is just four uh, in the second input well you only have one city edmonton which is mentioned three times now the traditional way to do this problem would probably be to read um, each city or well each line actually into an array so for the first um, example you're going to have an array of size 7 and inside this array well you're gonna have some cities happening more than once and I guess you can go through the array and for each city you check if it, ha if it um, has been mentioned earlier if it has, then you don't print it. Um, hmm, maybe we can try to write that. So I'm going to read the number of cases. Uh, oops, say so cases equal to in dot next int. So there will be two cases equal to zero. Cases is less two cases is less than cases. Case plus plus. And what we do here, um, oh, sorry, I can't use case is a keyword in Java. I can't use it. Sorry. Um, and now I'm going to read how many cities I have. So int cities equal to in dot next int. Then I'm just going to read all into a um, array. So uh, array strings. Hmm. Uh, oops, just next. Okay, so now we have all the cities inside this array city. Now from here, um, we're going to go through the cities one by one, starting from um, the first one, I guess. Yeah, let's just go through the first one first. So I'm going to go uh, in count equal to zero. This will count the number of unique cities that um, I can find in the list. Um, copy this. Okay, so now what I'm going to do um, for each city, I'm going to check if it has um, it's been on the list before so um, wherever I am uh, let's say I'm in um, what's the first occurrence of a duplicate so let's say I'm in Toronto now then when I'm at that point that's in I equal to three then I'm gonna check position zero one two and see if Toronto happened before if it has then I'm not going to increment the count uh, if it hasn't then I will increment the count. So maybe I'm going to have a boolean found equal to false. Then I'm going to go from in j uh, equal to zero. J is less than i. J plus plus. And uh, if at any time, sorry, that should be um, boolean, not bool, because we're in Java. Um, and what I'm doing here is just going to compare city i is equals to city j. And if that's the case, then we're going to say, uh, hope I missed a bracket. We're going to say that found equal to true. And in the end, we're going to say if found uh, well, actually, if not found, then we're going to increase count. Otherwise, we don't increase count. And that should give you the number of unique cities. 
um, in the list, right? Um, let's just output it and see what works. Um, copy that, paste it. Okay, so you see there's a four there. That's from the first input and hopefully that will give you one. Okay, so that approach will work and it's a very simple one. But this problem is actually a lot easier um, because there is a data structure that you can use in Java. It's called um, a set. Um, so I'm showing you the code here first so um, you have an idea on how long it takes to do it this way. But using set, um, this would be much, much, much shorter. So a set in Java is like a set in mathematics, meaning that it's a collection of objects where each object is unique. So if you have a set of integers, you're not going to have the same integer twice, right? For example, the set of positive integers, you're going to have one, two, three, four, five, and so on. You're not going to have one, 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 two, 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 three, 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 or whatever, right? Each number only occurs once. So in Java, um, the class for set is called the um, hash set. Let me write it down, hash set. And you gotta say to Java, you gotta tell Java what kind of object you want to have in there. So I want to have images in there for now, just to show you how this works. Uh, it's gonna be new hash set. Okay, um, well, I guess if you're new to Java, you probably should write the integer there as well, but Java is smart enough to work it out. So let's give this a go. Um, oh, there's an extra bracket there. Oops. Uh, let's say I have to set S and then I'm gonna add one, five times. Um, I'm gonna add, let's say add two again. Um, and then I'm going to print out the size of the set. Okay, and run it. Well, actually we can just print out the whole set as well. So I'm going to run that. And as you can see, uh, even though I added like um, eight numbers in there, um, it only takes each, well, it only takes the unique number. So in the end, I still have a set of size two with only two elements in there, one and two. And I imagine you can, you can guess how I'm gonna use that to do this problem. Okay, let's give it a try. Um, now I feel stupid because I deleted so many lines and I should need the first few lines, don't I? Um, okay, get rid of all that. Um, sorry, I have to redo the whole thing. Uh, C equal to in dot next int. And for integer case equal to, I always use case, I don't know why. Uh, cases, and then C equal to zero. C less than cases, C plus plus, and I'm going to read the number of cities. So int cities equal to int dot next int uh, for integers i to zero, i less than cities, i plus plus. Um, we don't need an array anymore now. What we do need is we need a set of strings, which is going to be the cities. So hash set string, uh, let's call it city. Mm, yeah, I apologize for my naming, um, the way I name variables. This is, um, I should call it cities, but uh, all right, change that to city. Uh, cities uh, equal to new has set string constructor. Okay. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to add the cities that I read in one by one. So string um, input equal to in dot next, and then just put that in. So cities add input. That's it. That's all you have to do. Um, if you're completely new to Java, well, I hope you're not that new to Java anymore, but in case you are, um, this is just the constructor. Um, when you get to learn about classes in Java, you'll get to um, know what this means. But for now, well, I guess you can just um, 
memorize that this is how you make a set. Now, um, I've read through all the cities and I put it one by one into this um, hash set um, cities. Now, all I have to do is output the number of unique cities that I have. And because every element is set is unique, um, this should just give me the number of cities. So like, uh, number of unique cities, I should say. So let's try to run it. Run, uh, copy that, paste, and four and one, as we hope. So that is done. I'm going to try to print, oh, uh, submit it. To make sure there's, um, there's no problems. Java, uh, what do we call this? Just main? Okay, main. Key. So you can see how much shorter this code is compared to what we did earlier. Oh, that's only a few. Uh, that's only two test cases. And it's a lot easier to write for sure. Um, I'm sorry about all the variables that I used. Okay, so that's the first problem. And the second problem is gonna be very similar. Uh, let's go look at it. So let's get this set up. Um, ICPC awards, did I make a package? Yes, I did. Okay, so um, this is something that actually happens in real competitions uh, in that in actual programming competitions, you're gonna have more than one team from one university, but usually they only give prizes to the top two teams from a university. So let's say you only have like two different universities coming to the competition and the first university like got the first eight spots like uh, they're like, you know, like from position one to position eight and then the second university came like nine to 16 or whatever, then the first award is gonna go, well, the first two awards gonna go to the first university and the second, like the, the next two awards gonna go to the second university, even though they came like ninth and 10th because they want to like spread out the awards to different universities. And in this question here, um, it's just something similar. You can see here, there's a list of teams and um, you can see that they're not giving any prizes to the team windows. Why? Because that is the second team from the same university, from the uh, VNU. So the first, team, uh, the first team, Linux, will get a prize. The second team will not. The same with all these universities, like uh, in position eight, nine, and 10, they're not getting any prize because, well, another team from the same university already got a prize. So your task is um, to determine which team will get a prize. So um, as you can see from input here, uh, VNU, uh, Linux will get a prize but VNU Windows will not. And in fact, is there not a VNU here? Yeah, you see there's a VNU DOS here, there's VNU Ubuntu. Uh, they came third and fourth uh, from the same university. So in fact, something like uh, Danang, right, never give up, actually got a prize, even though the other, uh, the other VN, F, uh, VNU teams won't get a prize. So in fact, what we have to do here is very simple. Um, you go through the list of teams well, that has the university as well. And if a team from that university already won a prize, well, that means that the other team will not get a prize. So hopefully you can kind of see how we can use sets here. I mean, I'm gonna have a set of universities, right? Every time I see a team from a university, I'm gonna put that university inside a set. And every time I get a new line, I'm gonna check, well, have the, um, have the university won a prize before? Like, is, has there been a team from the university that got a prize earlier? If the answer is yes, then I'm not gonna give a prize to that university. I'm not gonna print it out. So let's do that. I'm gonna start with the borrowing stuff. So we have to read in how many teams there are. Um, okay, and then we know that's the number of lines. Um, Okay, 
So on each line, I'm going to read in two strings. So let's use uh, in.next, um, string a equal to in.next, string b equal to in.next. Uh, is A is going to be the name of the university and B is going to be the name of the team. Uh, it doesn't really matter that much, actually, uh, the team name, because we're just going to print out the whole line again if they win the prize. So what I want to do is uh, for each team, um, I'm going to ask, well, I need a set of um, string to, um, to show me the university. So set string. Uh, let's call it uni, equal to new has set string. Okay, now, um, whenever I read a line, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask, uh, can you find that string? Can you find the uni uh, name in the has set uni? So if uh, a, uh, sorry, uni, and the command for that, the function is contains. Do you contain string a? If you contain string A, then I'm not getting, I'm not going to give this team any prize because some someone else, well, another team from the university has won. So actually, here I'm going to say if you don't contain A, then what I'm going to do is first, obviously, I'm going to add A. Right, I'm going to add the university in, inside uh, in there, and then I'm going to output just um, the uni and the team. Because um, that means they won the prize. Now, that should be it. Um, oh, sorry, I'm missing one detail, but let's just try if this works first. Um, clear that up. Let's run it. Okay, copy the input. Okay, so it works. Uh, just making sure that the first P are the same. Yeah. Sol, FNU, SJTU, NTU. Uh, the only difference is that, well, we're not supposed to give more than 12 prizes because that's the limit. It is guaranteed that there are at least 12 different universities and you will only give um, 12, well, sorry, you will only give prizes to the uh, first 12 teams. So just gonna do one more thing here. We can have um, hmm, count equal to, well, uh, zero. Every time we print something out, we're going to do count plus plus. And if at any point count is greater than equal to 12, we're just going to um, finish. So we're going to break out of this for loop. Okay, that should do it. Um, I'm not going to test it again because it's the same. Well, okay, let's test it. Copy, or oh, this should be there. Uh, stop set the NANG, yep. All right, so it looks good. I'm going to submit this one as well. Uh, let's copy the code. Main. And see if it gets accepted. Okay, looks fine. So there you have it. This is like a beginner's introduction to the class set. Um, so, so far, um, what do you know so far? Um, let me just do it here. So what did we actually do with the string set? We know how to do add. So, you know, you can uh, add something to the set. Uh, you can work out the um, size of the set, how many um, elements are in the set. You can check contains, uh, sorry, I mean, as in you can check if an element is inside a set or not, if a string is inside a set or not. Um, and right now that's pretty much, but that's, that's all we did so far, right? Um, so if you want to, um, you can check the Java doc for hash set yourself and see what else the class can do. In particular, I'm not gonna go through traversing through the set for now because um, we'll probably do that in another question. So just start simple, uh, and even just knowing this data structure, it will let you do many more questions easily. You know, if you compare what we did for the first question um, with the long for loop and it, like with the double for loop and everything, and you compare to um, you compare the solution using a hash set, this is a lot easier and a lot simpler to write. 
Okay, so that's it for this video and thanks for watching.